Okay, here we are in the last um, chapter for the review. So for number 30, it says graph the exponential function using transformations. So we have to remember how to graph the basic transformation and then we can use the transformations. So for a basic, tra a basic exponential, you're always going to have the points um, negative 1 and then 1 over a, 0 and 1, and then 1 and a. And in this case, a is always the base. So in this case, a is equal to 2. So the coordinates of my basic function are going to be negative 1, 0, 1, a is 2, and the reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. Okay. So that's the basic function. But since I have plus two up there in the basic function, that means I'm actually gonna go to the left two units. And then this minus five outside of the exponential means I'm gonna be going down five units. So what does that mean? When you go left two units, that means you're gonna take the X values and you're gonna minus two. And then down means you're gonna take the Y values and you're gonna minus five. So my new points become um, negative one minus two is negative three, zero minus two is negative two, and one minus two is negative one. And then the y value is minus five. So let's see here. Um, one half minus five is going to be negative nine halves, which is negative four and a half, so I can graph it. Um, one minus five is gonna give me negative four, and then two minus five is gonna give me negative three. So um, when I graph this, it's going to be one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So negative three and 4.5, negative two and negative four, and then negative one and negative three. And so it's going to be doing, um, this particular behavior. Now it should be going like this. I'm sorry. Notice this one's a little bit lower. So it actually will go like that and then like that. Now there's always supposed to be a horizontal asymptote on the zero, but because it shifted down five, now that horizontal asymptote should be at negative five. Okay. So that's important as well. Now, number 31 says, find the amount that will be in an account if that much is deposited or invested for three years at 5%, which means 0 0.05, compounded annually. So I have to use my formula, um, P1 plus R over N, and T times N. So I'm gonna plug in my P value plug in my rate, my in, my time, and my in again. And this can all be typed in the calculator. So 4422 parentheses 1 plus 0 0 0.05 over 1, close it, raise it to the 3 times 1. And we round this because it's money. 119.02. The seven will make it go to two cents. And so then that should be the value. Yep, that is the correct answer for this one. Okay, 32 says, what amount should be invested? So I don't know the P. Um, in an account paying 6% interest, so 0 0.06, compounded quarterly means N equals four, so that it will grow to 9,000. So the amount afterward will be 9,000 and then the time is two years. So I'm going to plug in all of this information. And about the only thing I can do is simplify this. So let's see, um, one plus 0 0.06 over four. The inside can be simplified to this and two times four is eight. What I can do is divide both sides by this number to solve for P. So then P equals 9,000 over 
1.015 raised to the eighth power. And I get 7989.40. And that checks out. So, so far, so good. Okay. Number 33 says a decay of 62, 662 milligrams of an isotope is given by this equation where T is the time in years since the initial amount of 662 milligrams was present. Find the amount to the nearest milligram left after 54 years. Well, remember, T is in years, right? So that means that the T value is what becomes 54. And so I can type all of this in my calculator. Six, oops, 662, and then the E button is here. So second E, negative 0 0.031 times 54. And I get 124.1, blah, blah, blah. It says round to the nearest milligram. So this would just be 124. Okay, number 34 is solving an equation. So we have log base four of 64 equal to x. X is already by itself. So all we're gonna do is change the base here and type that in the calculator. So fraction ln of 64 over ln of four, and we get three equals x. And that is correct. Now number 35, we have log with the base of x minus seven, a regular 12 equal to one. Now this is the base, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise each side with that exponent. So x minus seven is the base of the exponential and x minus seven is the base of the exponential. So that's gonna cancel this, which leaves me with 12, but over here I still have x minus seven to the power one. Well, if it's to the power one, you don't really need the parentheses and then if I add seven to both sides, I get that 19 equals X. And that is the correct solution for number 35. Now number 36 says, um, to write this as a single logarithm. So six log base five of four X plus five plus two log base five of 3x minus 6. So first thing you got to do is take the numbers in front and turn them into powers. So that this becomes log base 5 of this expression to the 6th power and this becomes log base 5 of this expression to the second power. Then because they're adding you can combine them into one log but when it's addition it means you actually have to multiply these two arguments together. And so then this is the answer. Now the choices may not have the brackets and if it doesn't that's okay just as long as your response is equivalent to the one in the, in the choices. Now number 37 says use the properties of logarithms to expand this one and um, Rewrite the expression. So let's see, we have x to the fourth, y squared over eight. So now we need to expand it out. So the first thing you need to do is split up the fraction. So that's gonna be log base three of the numerator minus log base three of the denominator. Then the next thing you need to do is split up this product. So that's gonna be log base three of x to the fourth plus log base three of y squared. And then the log base three of eight just comes tagging along. Now the last step you need to do, because this will not match any of your choices, is take your exponents and bring them to the front. So this one didn't have an exponent, so you can leave it alone. And that is the final answer on that one. Now for number 38, let's see what they want us to do. It says solve. 
So we have four with an exponent of x minus three equal to 25. So if I wanna get rid of an exponential base, I need to apply the logarithmic base four. And I need to do the same thing on both sides. So here, this will all cancel, leaving me with x minus three. And this I can type in my calculator, but I have to change the base. And I'm gonna add three to both sides so that I can solve for x. So x equals this fraction plus three. Now, if it asked me for the exact answer, then that would be it. But this one says round to the nearest thousandth if necessary. So let me type that in my calculator, fraction, ln of 25 over ln of four on the side plus three. Tenths, hundreds, thousandths, so this would be 5.322. And that does match what's in the back of the review for where all the answers are at. Now here we have three e exponent of five x minus six equal to 12. Now in order for me to apply the log, I have to have the exponential part isolated which means this part needs to be alone. So I'm gonna to have to divide by that coefficient so that I could get that exponential part by itself. Then this is a base E, so I need to do log base E on both sides, which is the ln. So then these will cancel and I'll have five X minus six equals to the ln of four. We still have to solve for x, so let's add six. So we have a plus six on the side and then divide by five. So now we have a giant fraction. Now I can, if it asks me for the exact answer, that's it. But if not, I'm gonna have to type in this whole thing exactly the way it is on my paper. And I get 1.477. And that does match the answers in the back. So let's go ahead and go to number 40. So for number 40, um, we have this equation to solve. And you cannot solve it until you just have you combine your logs. So I do have to combine these into one. So this will become log of two times x plus four because of the plus sign. And then remember, if there's no base, it's automatically a 10. So I'm gonna do exponential base 10. So 10 raised to this power and 10 raised to that power. Then that's gonna smash out all of that. So all I have left is four x and two times x plus four. If I distribute that two, we get this equation. And then if I minus two X on both sides, um, I will get two X equal to eight, divide by two, divide by two, we get X equals to four. Now this does have X in the argument, so I definitely need to check my answers. That will give me a 16, that's a two, and that will give me eight. So this answer does check out. Now 41, we have the ln of 4x plus the ln of 2x equal to the ln of nine. Again, you have to combine the logs into one. So this would be ln of 4x times 2x equal to the ln of nine. These are base E. So if I wanna get rid of the log base E, I have to do the exponential to this power and then the exponential to that power on both sides which is gonna cancel out all of that, leaving me with four X times two X equal to nine, which is six X squared equal to nine. And if I divide both sides by six, I get three halves. If I take the square root on both sides, I get plus or minus square root of three over square root of two, which is square root of three over square root of two is the square root of six over two. So I have two answers, square root of six over two and negative square root of six over two. Well, when I take a negative number times a positive four, that's gonna give me a negative argument here and here. So this one is a bad answer. But when I take a positive four times a positive number, I'll get a positive 
argument. The same thing when I multiply this times a positive two. So this would be my only answer um, is, now I got something different from what they have. So let me go back in and double check my work. So I have 4x, 2x, and 9. So it had a plus sign, so we multiplied. Oh, because 4 times 2 is not 6. Hmm. 4 times 2 is 8. So this is definitely why you want to write your show your work, right? Because if you show your work, then it will be evident um, that you understand what to do. You might have just made one small arithmetic error. And that's not such a big deal than just not understanding how to solve the problem at all, right? So let's see what we get when we put that in the calculator, which is what I should have put in the calculator to begin with. Now we get 3 square root of 2 over 4. So then you get the two solutions here. So you get positive 3 square root of 2 over 4, negative 3 square root of 2 over 4. But the same idea applies. A positive times a positive is positive. A positive times a positive is positive. So this one's good. A positive times a negative number will be negative, so this answer is still bad. And so this is the only solution to the problem. Okay, um, we're going to get into number 42 now. So let's take number 42, and it says, the growth in population of the city can be seen using this formula, where t is the number of years. According to this formula, how many years will it take the population to double its year zero value? Remember, the number in front is the year zero value. So if I double that, that will be 11623 times 2 is going to be 23246. So I want to know how long it's going to take this equation to reach that amount. So the first thing I got to do is isolate the exponential by dividing both sides by this number. And because I got that by multiplying it by 2, if you divide it, it's just going to get 2. And then we want to get rid of the exponential, so we're going to do the base e. So log base e is just ln. That's going to cancel out the e. So you get 0 0.006t, divide by 0, that decimal, and then you get t equals, let's see, ln of 2 divided by, oops, what am I doing, fraction, ln of 2 divided by 0 0.006, and does it say to round, round to the tenth of a year, so 115.5. And that is correct. Now number 43, it says, the population is increasing according to the exponential function here, where y is in millions and x is the number of years. Which of the following should be done in order to answer the question, how long will it take for the population to quadruple? So remember, this is what you start with. If you're going to quadruple, you're going to do 3 times 4, which is 12. And so then this y value is what is going to become 12. So you're actually going to have to do a, which is solve, and I would have written 12 equal to this, but it doesn't matter which side as long as they're still equal, okay? So it should be a. Now 44 says how long will it take for this amount, so that's my principal, to grow to that amount, so that's the total amount at an interest rate of 0 0.059, compounded continuously. So if it's compounded continuously, we have to use this formula, not the other one with the one and the n. So let's see, 2, 1, 
800 equal to 5300 E 0.059 T. So I'm gonna divide by the coefficient to get the exponential part by itself. And then let's see, um, 21800 divided by 5300. Let's put that as a fraction so that we don't round too soon. And then we're gonna get rid of the E by doing the log base E on both sides. So that's gonna cancel out the exponential part. So you get ln of 218 over 53 equal to 0 0.059t. And then you have to divide both sides by that decimal. So then you get t equal to, and let's type in this exactly the way it is on my calculator. So ln of 218 over 53, close that, and then downstairs 0 0.059. And it says round to the nearest hundredth. So tenths, hundredths, that's gonna be 23.97. And that does match what we have in the back. Now number 45 is going to be, um, how long will it take a sample of radioactive substance to decay to half of its original amount if it decays according to this function. Well, remember, this is the original, so half of that would be 100. So that means this is gonna equal 100 now. So I'm gonna divide by the coefficient again. I'm gonna get 1 half or 0.5. Do the ln on both sides to get rid of the exponential. So you have ln of 0.5 equal to negative 0.187t divided by negative 0.187. So then we get t equals, let's see, um, ln of 0.5 over negative 0.187, and it says round to the nearest hundredth of a year, so 3.71. And that matches what we have in the back. Now, um, before I get into chapter five, chapter five is not really long, um, but I do, I think I am going to do a separate video for the chapter five. Um, but I do wanna get to one extra problem that I noticed that I saw on the final. So here's the extra kind of problem. It says, find the hydronium ion concentrate if the pH is 7.1. I remember the formula for pH is this. So I know that the pH is 7.1 and I'm trying to figure out that hydronium concentrate level. I'm just gonna use X because I don't wanna use all those letters and symbols, right? It looks a little confusing. So if I wanna solve this, first thing I have to do is isolate the logarithm. So then I have negative 7.1 equal to log of x. Now this is a base 10, so if I wanna get rid of a log base 10, I'm gonna do the exponential base 10 raised to this side, and then the exponential base 10 raised to that side. That's gonna make this go away, and on this side, I'm gonna have this expression. And so let's see what we get when we type 10 raised to the negative 7.1. It's this number, but all the choices, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All the choices in the um, exam are gonna be in scientific notation. So if you know how to convert to scientific notation, great. If not, you can always go into scientific mode, quit out of there, and just hit enter and it's 7.9 times 10 to the negative eight. You only use the first, you round it to the first decimal place, and then you do times 10 to the negative eight. So this would be the correct answer. Just make sure before you continue with the rest of the exam that you go back to normal mode. Okay, I'm gonna stop here and then we'll do chapter five when we come back.